Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is Kevin Wallace again with the third of three particularly challenging topics in the world of quality of service. This video is on LFI, Link Fragmentation and Interleaving. First of all, we want to conceptualize what this QoS mechanism can do for us, and we want to see how to configure it, and we're going to be able to audibly hear how voice quality improves after we've implemented LFI. First of all, let's identify the issue that we're trying to overcome with LFI. LFI is a link efficiency mechanism, meaning that it's going to help us make the most efficient use of the relatively limited bandwidth on a WAN link. Let's imagine that we had a big data packet, and this big data packet was wanting to exit a router's interface going out to the wide area network. And behind that data packet, we had a series of voice packets. If it takes too long to get the big data packet out of the router's WAN interface, the voice packets could be adversely delayed. In fact, to give you some numbers, there's a design recommendation. It's called the G.114 recommendation that says the one-way delay for audio should not be greater than 150 milliseconds. From the time I speak something to the time you hear it, ideally, that should not be greater than 150 milliseconds. But if that voice packet that needs to get from point A to point B in no more than 150 milliseconds gets stuck behind a big data packet, it could experience excessive serialization delay. Serialization delay is the time that it takes a packet to get out on the wire. To give you an extreme example, let's say that this was only a 56K interface. I know that's small by today's standards, but just to make the point, if this were a 56K interface and this data packet were 1,500 bytes in size, the serialization delay would be about 214 milliseconds. In other words, the voice packet has already experienced too much delay before it even gets out on the wire, where it's going to experience even more delay. This can destroy our quality of service. How can we overcome this? The idea is we can take that big data packet and bust it up, fragment it into little bitty data packets. One of my friends, Jeremy Chara, came up with an analogy that I first heard many, many years ago when he and I were teaching a quality of service class, and it goes like this. Imagine the big data packet as one of those big triple tractor trailers. Have you seen those on the road? It's not just one tractor and a trailer behind it. It has three trailers behind it. They're not even allowed on the road in some states. They're called longer combination vehicles, or LCVs. And let's imagine that we're in our little sports car, and we get stuck behind one of these longer combination vehicles, a triple tractor trailer, and we're at a traffic light. The traffic light turns from red to green, and the truck starts to move under the traffic light, and the first trailer goes through, and the second trailer goes through, and the third trailer goes through, and eventually, if the light doesn't turn red again, we eventually get to go through. But we were delayed because we had this big, massive payload in front of us. What if we did this? What if we took that big payload, those three different trailers behind the one tractor, and what if we created three separate vehicles on the road, three separate tractor trailers, each tractor pulling a single trailer? In that case, in our little sports car, we're fast and agile. We could probably weave in and out of traffic a little bit and get ahead of one or two of those tractor trailers, which now have a smaller size. That's what we want to do with our big data packet. We want to take our data packet and bust it up. We want to fragment it into smaller packets. And then, like we're shuffling a deck of cards, we want to shuffle in the little tiny voice packets in amongst the now fragmented data packets. There is a slight trade-off when we do this. You might spot it. Each of those data packets has to have their own header. We went from having a big data packet with one header to lots of little data packets, each with their own header. In other words, we're going to take up extra bandwidth on the wide area network if we do this link fragmentation and interleaving. However, for voice, it is an acceptable trade-off. There is a dividing line, though, where it starts to hurt us more than it helps us. That dividing line is a bandwidth of 768 kilobits per second. If our bandwidth is greater than 768 kilobits per second, 
the way the math works out, it starts to hurt us more than help us to do link fragmentation and interleaving. Because above 768 kilobits per second, the serialization delay for our MTU size of 1500 bytes is still acceptable. We'll get into the math a bit later, but that's a key design number to know. We only want to do this for voice traffic when the bandwidth is less than 768 kilobits per second. What specific mechanisms, though, are going to do LFI? The first one, and the one that we're going to be demonstrating in a few moments, is MLP, or Multilink PPP, or some literature will abbreviate it as MPPP. Multilink PPP is going to do link fragmentation and interleaving. It will fragment the big data packets, and then, like we said, shuffling a deck of cards, we will shuffle in the little tiny voice packets. And when I first heard about multi-link PPP, I thought, well, that's great, but it's not going to help me because I don't have multiple links. I've just got a single serial link interconnecting a couple of routers. This is only going to work with multiple links, right? Actually, no. Multi-link PPP will work over a single link. In fact, we'll do that for you in just a few moments. And while we will not get into the configuration of a virtual template today, I just want to make you aware that even on a frame relay or an ATM link, we can do multi-link PPP. We can apply a virtual template to a frame relay or an ATM circuit. And even though those circuits are not running the point-to-point -point protocol, they're running ATM or frame relay, we can have that virtual template configured for multi-link PPP, and we can take advantage of the characteristics of multi-link PPP even on these non-point-to-point -point protocol link types. But speaking of frame relay, there is an LFI mechanism targeting a frame relay and that is FRF12, or Frame Relay Form 12. By the way, there's also an older LFI mechanism called FRF11 Annex C. We're not going to talk about that one because it's not for voice over IP. It's for voice over Frame Relay, and there's a big difference. You might be sending voice packets across a Frame Relay network, but that does not mean you're doing voice over Frame Relay. If you're sending those voice packets to a remote IP address, you're doing voice over IP, it just happens to be over a frame relay network. What you're doing is voice over IP over frame relay. That's very different than voice over frame relay, which doesn't even require IP addressing. That's where you send your voice frames out a local DELSI. And we pretty much never see that in the real world anymore. But if you want to set up FRF12, and that's not what we're going to be demonstrating today, realize that you're going to set it up as part of a frame relay map class, like you were setting up frame relay traffic shaping. And that map class can be applied to a frame relay physical interface, a sub-interface, or a PVC, in other words, a DLC, a data link connection identifier. We've set the stage now. We've defined what is LFI, why do we need it, what are a couple of LFI mechanisms. Let's now take a look at a topology that could greatly benefit from LFI. In this topology, we have a link that might benefit from LFI. Notice it's running at 128K. It's between routers R1 and R2. Notice we have an analog phone connected to R1, another analog phone connected to R3. Let's place a phone call between those two phones. Let's go over to phone number 2222 and go off hook and let's dial 1111. Let's take that phone off hook and let me show you a trick now for testing voice quality. Let's go into router R3 and I'm going to give a command that's going to cause us to send a tone over this connection, this voice over IP connection going over to phone number 1111 and it's going to be a solid tone and we're going to be able to hear that nice solid tone on that phone. I'll hold the phone up to the microphone so that you can hear it. And if we had a quality issue, if we were dropping packets for example, we might hear gaps in that tone. Let's go over to router R3 and on router R3 let's say test voice port and I just noticed on screen I have it labeled as FXS 0 slash 0. It's actually 1 slash 1. Let's say test voice port 1 slash 1 and let's inject a tone across the network of 1000 Hertz and let's listen. We heard a nice solid tone, which is what we wanted, but if we also create some web traffic going over this 128K link, let's see what happens then. I'm going to start loading some web traffic, and let's listen to the tone. Could you hear those gaps in the playback? It sounded a little bit like Morse code, didn't it? It was a solid tone, but it was going beep, 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 beep. 
it was breaking up. What was going on there? Well, I can tell you we were not dropping packets. I promise we were not dropping packets. I know it sounded like we were dropping packets, but actually we were just delaying packets. It was taking so long for those web packets to get out of this 128K interface that it was adversely delaying the voice packets. In fact, let's take a look at the math behind the scenes. 